Father, forgive us. We live in a broken nation. And we're asking, Father, the Lord, that you will help bring healing to us. Restore our light. Father, make us salty again. Father, pour out your spirit upon us. Lord, we need you. I pray for a fresh baptism in your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you will send the Holy Spirit to your church. I pray that you will breathe upon us. I pray, Lord God, that you will forgive us. Father, restore us. Father, you are God of restoration. Father, I pray, restore your church. When we're going to take our place, as the God has ordained for us to stand in the gap for the people in the nation. Let's remember what Peter says. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Remember the job of a priesthood was to stand before God and intercede for the people. And that's what God's called us to do. To stand in the gap and to pray for the people of Scotland. Do we care for the people of Scotland? Do we care for the broken, the marginalized? Do we care for the prostitutes? Do we care for the homosexuals and lesbians? God loves them. God desires to save them. Do we care for the people who are going to a lost eternity? We need to hear God again in our midst and let God put compassion in our hearts because we were once in that tree. I was out there once. Born in a lost eternity. And I didn't know it. But thank God somebody spoke the gospel to me. Hallelujah. perversity into the church. Forgive us for tolerating wickedness and justifying his presence within the body of Christ, the Messiah. Forgive us these terrible sins. Forgive us for distorting the scriptures, not only to condone these actions, but actively provoke the sin within the church. Oh God, forgive us Forgive us for not speaking out against abortion and the killing of the innocent. Forgive us, O oh God, that we have not spoke out and took a stand and raised our voice for the sake of these unborn little ones. Forgive us for dropping the baton that our fathers and our mothers passed to us. They paid a great price for Scotland to be called the land of the book and the land of the Bible. Forgive us! Our fathers paid a great price for this nation. Many of them died. There's a monument at the bottom of the graveyard. 18,000 recorded deaths, murdered by wicked kings. The dragoons who killed indiscriminately Women were raped and pillaged, drowned in stakes in the Solway Firth. Others were sent as slaves to the far colonies. Others were dragged to the grass market and there they were hanged cruelly. Heads were cut off. Hands were hung in spikes in the nether bowl. I walked and I tried to imagine what that would be like. They paid a great price for the freedom of this land. To protect the faith. They stood up against a pope and papacy. They stood up against wicked kings who thought that they could have rule over the church. As Andrew Melville put King Charles, or is it James, James in his place. As his sire, there are two kingdoms in Scotland. The kingdom of men, who you happen to be the king of. But the kingdom of God, you are only a member. 
and you will have no part to play in running the church. This is our nation. James Guthrie was a godly covenant, and maybe one of the first that gave his life for the cause. And it says, before he was cruelly turned over, he gets little boy William, and he sat on his lap, and he says, William, one day, they will say your father was a corrupt man and a traitor. He says, William, when you grow old, remember, I fought a good fight for the cause of Christ. And when James Grothy was hanged cruelly, they cut off his head and they kept the little boy away, wee Willie. And they stuck him on a cruel spike on these gates of Edinburgh as a warning to anybody else who would dare walk in his footsteps. And it says one day, we while he was out playing, and as he went down the cobble streets, he looked up, and he seen his father's head, and he ran into the house, his mother had been banished, and he cried, and he cried, and he called her, and he says, I've just seen my father's seat, I've seen my father's seat, and his wee heart was broken, but he raised himself up to be a godly man. Oh, there was a great price paid for the land of Scotland to be called the land of the book, to have a Christian heritage. Our fathers paid a great price, our mothers and our children. There was another man, Richard Cameron, Lion of the Covenant, and he met his death in the battlefield, and he caught up his hands. And they cut off his head and they put him in a bag and they brought him to Edinburgh, to this city. And his poor father was locked up in a prison cell because he was visiting. He came to these conventicles that they said was outlawed. And they came cruelly. And they came into his cell and they dropped his son's head and his hand into his father's lap. Do you recognize them, said the crew? Dragoons. He took them in his hands and he kissed his son. He says, yes, I know them. My son, my son, my son. Yes, I know them. Brethren, do you know the price that was paid for our freedoms, for our liberties? And there is a church we are weak, one bunch. We have forgotten our history. We have forgotten the stock that we came from. I believe God is reminding us there was a great price paid for Scotland. Now we're a land of drunkards. We're a land that doesn't do church. We're a land now that people just laugh at us. Missionaries have been sent to Scotland to evangelize us. Because we're seen as a pagan nation. And how can we argue with them? Oh, Father, our need is so, so great. And we come before you, O Lord, to beseech you. Because you are a God of mercy. And you are a God of love. And Lord, you see the pain of the parents who have lost their children. You see the pain, O oh Lord, of people who are deprived, people, O oh Lord, who are afflicted. And so, Lord, we beseech you, show us your glory, Lord, manifest your power, revive your work, Lord, in the midst of the years. Bless Scotland, Lord, may she again be a land of the book, may she again be a beacon on a hill. Oh, may your light shine forth. May you send forth missionaries again from this land. May you raise up godly priests, godly ministers. May your word no longer be diluted. May it be sharp and quick and powerful. Oh Lord, shape, shape this land, we ask. Oh, let your power come. That power, oh God, which is greater and stronger than all the powers of darkness. Lord. Let it come again. Let it come sweeping and surging over our nation to revive, to renew, to bless, to make our nation whole. For surely, Lord, we are a divided nation. We have lost the way. And we pray, O oh God, that your light 
shall shine so brilliantly that all oh Lord and then people will be directed toward you. People shall say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we do ask that your church shall be a shining light. We pray that we shall be your bride, pure and chaste and lovely, separated unto yourself with no idols. Oh Lord, be merciful. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour out the spirit, Lord, of conviction upon the church, O oh God, that we might be awakened fully to the righteousness which is in thyself. O oh, cleanse, cleanse the church, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord, for indeed we are found wanting. But, O oh Lord, we look to that vision of your mighty power. We look, O oh Lord, to that day when we will indeed endure your people with power from on high, that there shall be a fresh Pentecost. Oh yes, Lord, a fresh Pentecost.